You're listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life, hosted by Travcon. Welcome to the podcast, Travel Nursing and Allied Life. I'm Michelle Freitag, and I'm hosting the Traveler Minute today. And with me today is a dynamic travel healthcare duo that has been creating their own unique story for years. Just traveling from one assignment to another was not enough for them. So they decided to help encourage as many travelers as they could into their lifestyle. I've had the pleasure of spending time with these two travelers and their energy is infectious and contagious. They've also helped out with the Travelers Conference, both on the committee and as speakers. So with me today is Kim Gibson, a travel sonographer, and her husband, Aaron, who is an interventional technologist. They met while working their staff jobs, decided to hit the road together, and have been traveling ever since for the last eight years. Thank you for joining us today, Kim and Aaron. Oh, oh thanks for God, having thanks us. Thanks for having us. What a cool introduction. I I'm know. like, oh, <laughs> we're so cool. <laughs> Every bit of it is true. I still oh, think back oh. when we got together in San Diego and Kim shows oh. up and she's got the whole smoothie thing going on and Aaron's <laughs> right in there with anything that we suggest. So oh, really that cool. Was so fun. That was. I was actually was. just looking at a couple of pictures popped up um, on our little portal thing that we take with us. And I was like, oh, that was so awesome. It's a good it group. The Travcon group is a cool group group of humans that's yeah. for sure fun they they really are they really yeah. are so you two met prior to traveling correct correct yes we met um it was my first job out of college this was thir- thir- four, 13 14 years ago mm-hmm. and we Aaron had just moved up to a new city and I had just started working and we kind of just became really good friends we didn't really know anybody in the area well, I was, and I was legally and and you know stalking her basically yeah. <laughs> in that nice sweet way that you do oh yeah, yeah. he lured me in hey, became it friends and here we are 14 years later still going strong tell us how you decided so now you're two people you work in a staff job tell us how you decided to leave it all behind and both go traveling together Oh, my oh gosh, man, that story. I yeah, mean, that's, that's the a, big that's... question that a lot yeah. of people have is how do I do it? Why do I do it? Yeah. So we had we had talked a lot about, you know, we were working so much. Uh, I was seven on seven off at call on, on call and still working during the day. And so I had four days off a month, which, in my opinion, actually adds up to two days off because I don't consider Sunday because you're kind of gearing up for the next week. Um, and so we had a lot of conversations like <clears throat> this can't be it. Um yeah. We didn't know what it was. And Kim went on call one day and a girl was like, I'm going to start traveling. And, and she hadn't seen her for like two years. And I'll let you kind of pick up with Jen. Yeah. I, you know, kind of like what Aaron is saying, we had, we were working our butts off. We had no money and we could barely make her ends meet. We dreamed of traveling, taking time off, exploring the world. And we could barely take off, you know, the two weeks a year because we never had enough money. <laughs> Or and, PTO or, because yeah, they would we would go home right. during the day or yeah, we would use any PTO we had, so we never had enough to even take a proper vacation. And so we were like, there has to be more. Like this can this is not the life we signed up for. We had just bought a house and like got married and was like settling in and thought that was kind of the life we want. We're like, this is exactly the opposite. Like, what have we done? Like, <laughs> we feel like we're kind of trapped in this prison. And so I went to work. I didn't even know traveling was a thing. And I had been in the career for five years and I went and um, one of the girls I was chatting with, I hadn't seen in a while said, Hey, my husband and I are picking up and we're going to hit the road and travel. And I'm like, what is traveling? Like, give me all the information. I had, I didn't even know this was a thing. And so I came home and I was like, Aaron's going to think I'm crazy. Like I'm, proposing we sell our home quit our jobs and hit the road into this world we knew nothing about and we didn't know at the time you know about travcon about you know this community of mm-hmm. other travelers like we thought right. we were like the only ones doing it you well know? And social wasn't huge then either i mean yeah. we're, we were just coming off the cusp of like myspace not to date mm-hmm. ourselves but you know. yeah it was a, <laughs> a long time ago and um so anyways i came home and and i said hey there's this thing like what do you think? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, yes, like let's let's do no it. No hesitation. Like, what do we have to lose. 
Yeah. yeah. And I think just one correction on hers was I always knew of traveling. I just didn't know radiology had a big community. And so we called, I think that was Sunday. You got called in on Monday. We called the, the company that she was going through and, and the recruiter was like, IR and ultrasound is in so much need. Uh, you guys could travel till you retire. And we were like, yeah. what? Like, this Sign is me up now. Yeah. yeah. We literally put our house on the market and quit our jobs. And we were out traveling two months later. Yeah. And that was almost 10 years ago. And we've never Nine years back. ago. Yeah. Almost be 10 in August. Yeah. Well, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, best decision we ever made, but. <laughs> that's uh, fantastic. Crazy. So you're traveling. And yet that's not quite enough for you. You decide, <laughs> hey, we're going to let everyone else know about this absolutely cool lifestyle because we love it so much. But you also recognize that it's a huge learning curve. I mean, everybody's got their own profession and they know it really well. Even if they've been in it for 20 years, there's still a big learning curve to be a traveler because you got housing and taxes and, and negotiating and contracts. And there's a ton of stuff to learn. So you decided to put together an online schooling or course. Yeah. And that's the traveler school, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Tell us so a bit about we, that. Yeah. yeah. So when we were, the, the one pivotal moment um, was we were in the Philippines and we were on a snorkeling tour and this guy was asking us, you know, how we've been able to take so much time off to go and travel the world as being so young. And so we were telling him how we're healthcare travelers and we've been doing all this stuff and so he starts asking us all these questions. And then he actually said one thing that still sticks with me. He was like, just when you think that you've reached the highest level that you can, you meet other people and you realize that you've been doing everything wrong. <laughs> and I said, well, sir, do you mind if I ask what you do? And he says, I'm a rocket scientist at NASA. And, like, oh. and we were like, he thinks that we're doing it right. Yeah. Like, that's insane. And so we started talking and we realized that everybody asks us how we do this, how are we able to do it? And there were so many questions, especially coming from radiology, um, how we were able to live this lifestyle. And so we just started talking and started putting together some training. Yeah, like we would always receive, you know, messages or emails and just like people being like, hey, how do you guys do what you do? What are some tips? Like, how can I get started? And so we were always answering these questions. And so we thought, okay, there's obviously a need. People want to mm -hmm. learn. We didn't know anything. We made tons of mistakes in the beginning because we just jumped in and figured it out as we went. We and all did. Yeah. We all did. did. Right? <laughs> so we were like, okay, let's, we started a Facebook group just to kind of do trainings and kind of teach what we knew to newer travelers. And people kept showing up and they're like, okay, we want to know this. We want to know more. Like, you know, so there was so much and we thought, well, let's condense this and put it all into one area. That's a step-by-step -step process that people can sign up for and have everything they need in one place and learn all of the travel things from home, you know, from their mm -hmm. computer. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, and, and that's kind of how the course came about. We, we learned that way through fitness and through coaching. And, and so we were online course people. And so we yeah. love to just get a course from people that we think that we learn from and we vibe with um, and we like the way they teach. And so that was always in our heads. And so when we were doing these trainings, we were seeing they were going an hour and a half, two hours. So we're like, how do we condense this and just give people like what they want right away so they could binge in a weekend, right. sit down, have a glass of wine and be so excited to have all the information in one place. And so, you know, we just took our community along with that and, and it, it's been great. Three years later, traveler school is still rolling. So that's crazy. That's fantastic. And everybody learns differently. You know, you joined us in newbie boot camp. You were one of the speakers. People don't want to do online. They can do in person. If they yeah. can't make it to the conference, there's online options. It's fantastic yeah. to have these, these different options and everybody, everybody takes in the same information just a little differently. So that's perfect. Correct. Yes. So what, what is your website for the traveler school? If somebody wants to find it. Yeah, so it's um, www.kim and Aaron. Unfortunately, I spell my name very weird, um, but it's k i m a n d e r r a n g dot com forward slash t school. Yeah, all the information will be in the notes below, so don't worry if you didn't catch it there. You'll find <laughs> it in the notes below. <laughs> all right, so continuing on your life journey, here are your staff nurses. You decide you're going to make the final plunge. You jump into travel nursing. You do this for years. Now, at the same time, you're adding on the traveler school. 
Mm-hmm. And then you joined TravCon and you're like, hey, this is awesome. And Aaron, you basically ran the allied room. That was so cool because we'd never had an allied room before. And then you guys get up on stage and you did one of the presentations at the newbie boot camp as well. Mm-hmm. Then after TravCon, that was 2019, mm-hmm. God, you, so you decided to do a gap year. Like you weren't already <laughs> gapping for the last eight years. You decide you're going to do an official gap year. What was yes. that about? And what happened? So that's all her, man. I've always like travel <laughs> runs through my veins. Like I've always dreamed of taking a year off, traveling the world and just like a full year, you know, not, you know, a couple of weeks or a month, like a whole year of just focusing on travel and we had been saving up for it and gearing up for it. And we were so excited. And so we left. We actually, we started our trip in March of last year. March 2020. No, we started. March 2020. Did we? Yeah. And yeah. Wow. And we were in New Zealand, actually, living in a van that was kicking off this whole year of travel. We thought, let's just go and have this crazy adventure. And we're living in a van in New Zealand. And as we know what happened, March, 2020. I can't believe you left New Zealand, right? What were you thinking? We we left the day before. I know. I'm like, we should have stayed. But (laughs) we'd still be there. No. (laughs) Well, we left the day before they closed the borders and like everyone else, we thought, well, we'll just come home a couple weeks, let this blow over. And then we we were planning to go to Mexico and that's where we were going to start um, the, whole, the official yeah. year of, of starting in Central America, going through all through South America and so on. And then here we are a year later and we still haven't been able to travel. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> so we're, we're, we're moving forward with that. We're hoping July kind of starts to open up a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, beneficially, we were both blessed enough to get the vaccine, just like a lot of the healthcare workers Excellent. out there. Um, so that's definitely helpful. Um, but I do want to say on that 2019, um, when you said how'd that come about, the day we left for Travcom, we were just talking about this, was the day we made our last payment on like 30K in, in personal debt. Oh, and yeah. so once we made that payment, we were going to Travcon, then we were following that trip with a Paris and Barcelona trip. Um, we were just like, wow, like we can really do this. Um, and we still had some remaining time in our contract and we were saving money. And so Kim was just like, I want to keep doing this. Let's, let's stop putting this off and let's do it. And we made it, we said, all right, March, let that's let's it. Like it. no more contracts for that year. Let's just focus on a dream that we wanted. And, you know, traveling as a healthcare professional made that all possible. Yeah. You know, that really is everyone's dream is there's so many travelers that are out there because they want to pay off their bills. They want to get out of that cyclic of having the debt, you know, it might be from school debt. It might be from anything, Yeah. but uh, that's the dream to make that final payment and say, you are out of debt. Yeah. What a great feeling. And it happened like on the plane, like we were leaving to head to Travcon. Mm -hmm. So it was this celebratory moment. And and we talked about it at Travcon too, in, in one of our talks, but how healthcare traveling really does allow you to work hard and pay off your debts very much more quickly, at least for us than being working full time and barely being able to save. And it really gives you so much freedom to be able to plan a year around the world. And and that could be a very realistic type of goal. Mm -hmm. It's actually less money to take a year to travel than it is to like pay rent and all the bills we have here, Mm -hmm. you know, are it's, it's a lot more doable, I think, than people think. So it requires a lot of planning, but it's still, like you say, you don't get into that trap of spending everything that you bring in because you've got the space to fill it. You're going to go, you're going to do mini trips or maybe you flex off. Yeah. You really focus from assignment to assignment. Mm -hmm. And it also really helps when you share, Mm -hmm. you two have that double bonus where you can share your housing where you can share a lot of that and your vehicle. So that's huge. Yes. Yeah, it is. It really it's is. It's a blessing. And, it, and it's been so, you know, coming from Florida again, putting that out there for, you know, radiology, it's a lower paying where, you know, I almost every place I walk into now that I tell them what I was making there and they're just like that, how'd you even live? And it's- Aaron, a, that- that is not exclusive to radiology. That is nursing. That is yeah. <laughs> right. Florida just, yeah. you pay for the sunshine. You really Yeah, do. well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I, I've 
heard that, but I wasn't sure the sources and things like that. So I'm glad that, that you brought that yeah. up as well. But yes, across the board, Florida is a very low paying uh, healthcare state. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, traveling, we were just talking about one weekend of call at this current contract, I made more than I made in a month back in Florida, <laughs> working the That's seven crazy. on seven off. <laughs> So more freedom, more money. And so that was, you know, yeah. that's just the beauty of, of traveling. Yeah. So you're in Palm Springs right now? We are. Beautiful Palm Springs. And Spring. you said you were in a level one, uh, a level one hospital and they deal with all everything, strokes, traumas. And what do you do in interventional radiology? You were mentioning yeah. a case last night. Yeah. yeah, so I am coming off. Uh, I did a full day, a full 10 hour shift. Um, it was yesterday. actually yeah, yesterday, 10 and a half. And then, of course, Pager went off at um, oh, dark 30. And um, I was there from 1230 to 530 or six o'clock in the morning. Um, and then technically, beautifully, I work for 10. So today was my scheduled day off, or else I would have been back at seven to do another 10 hour day. Mm -hmm. um, which Kim woke up and said, I don't know how you do that. But um, interventional radiology is basically um, minimally invasive procedures that uh, we can do everything through a needle stick. They say that majority of the population that comes in the hospital has been in interventional radiology, but only 4% know we exist because they think it's the OR, they think it's the yes. cath lab. Um, and when you say interventional radiology, I think it just flies over people's heads. Um, but we cover, um, some departments cover cardiac, uh, stroke, and normal body IR. Um, where I'm at, we just cover neuro, meaning anybody comes in for uh, Which is stroke. what you did last night. Yeah, it's what we got called in last night. Um, stroke or bleed or um, uh, aneurysms, we'll cover that. And then just body IR is pretty much everything, but we can go in and stop bleeding. So we get a lot of trauma, car accidents, um, and things like that. So the stroke was you last night. You know, the whole, when you talk about the stroke, there's so much, um, so, so much progress in what they've done with strokes and to be able to do a stroke extraction, mm -hmm. you know, literally going in there and just pulling out the stroke and they have such great responses from that. Uh -huh. We'll send people down to UCSF just for that procedure. Even if they're five or six hours out of their window, they still have a chance with this extraction. And you saw some really impressive results from that last night, right? Yeah, the, the, the individual wasn't able to speak very clearly. Um, when his, he came in. Yeah, his, um, his, his uh, testing score was just bad, like nothing with his arms. I mean, he was moving his legs around. Um, and so we went in, made a couple passes with the suction and then went in with a stent retriever and pulled out some clot and then went back in with suction and we got perfusion to the area that uh, was clotted off. Um, it wasn't full perfusion, but it was uh, way more than, than he was receiving. It was completely clotted off. Um, and he and started talking. He right? started speaking and kind Excellent. of moving extremities. And it was just, it's really cool to watch, to see them on the table, to not be able to do that. And you can see the fear in their eyes to then get off the table and be like, whoa, like, you know, some of them will be on full on like, hey, I'm Aaron. And <laughs> wow, what, what just happened? And it's just really cool to see. And it's able to do that all through a needle stick in the groin. I mean, it's incredible. That's yeah. super rewarding to see that kind of that kind of improvement. And mm -hmm. I've heard that's just, you know, really becoming the standard of care, this clot extraction. So if you're lucky enough to be near a facility and yours is right in the middle of Palm Springs, which is mm -hmm. geriatric central, that's <laughs> ideal for that. Yeah. 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 Now, Kim, your uh, sonography. So yeah. you do ultrasound both in your tiny little dark cubby hole, which is somewhere in the middle of the radiology department. And yes. then you do portable ultrasounds, right? When, oh, yeah. when the ER staff whines that their patient is too unstable to go to you, it yeah. just means we really don't want to bother moving over to your little oh, my gosh. Home. Well, yeah. especially with COVID, you've been going a lot to the ICU and- Yeah, um, right. I'm working at another hospital in Palm Springs and I'm so grateful because this hospital, there's, I think there was like 191 COVID cases and wow. yeah, which is insane. Wow. And every time someone is discharged from the ICU, they play the song, here comes the sun, dude. <laughs> so they play it over the speakers. And so it's been going off so much. And I think the last time we checked, we were down to nine, which is incredible. Um, so we haven't had to do that many COVID cases and they hardly do any portables 
which <laughs> I love. They have very strict rules about portables. Um, but yeah, so we just do a lot of vascular, you know, OB general, all, all different kinds of procedures and stuff there. Not so, just babies. Not just babies. We do it all. <laughs> so when I did a wilderness medicine conference years ago, which by the way, I highly recommend for any healthcare traveler to do, they do them in Montana, Taos, uh, Hawaii, a couple other spots, they two, two or three a year. They were before COVID. And 90% of the attendees are physicians, but because we are familiar with a lot of it, uh, it's just fascinating information. And it's about how to manage in the wilderness if you come across someone who's got a broken leg or internal bleeding or something. And they came up with all sorts of interesting tools that you can use. So I'm thinking of you right now, Kim, and your ability to read an ultrasound, it's something that it's a difficult skill to learn. Oh yeah. Once you'll know it, you're good. But there's so few people that are comfortable reading ultrasounds. Mm -hmm. There is a little attachment that you order off of Amazon and it plugs into your iPhone and you can do a quick fast exam on somebody who might've fallen off a cliff or fallen down while hiking. And you'll know if there's internal bleeding or not and whether to chopper them out or, Hey, you can get up and walk out. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I've seen those. Actually, I think you should get one for your travel year. I mean, you could be in the Andes. I know you guys, you guys don't do oh, yeah. two mile walks. You do 20 mile hikes. So oh, yeah. it's something that you should probably consider along with a pulse ox to, <laughs> um, to carry on your travels because your skills yeah. You you just need a little device to uh, read it. And your iPhone is with you anyways. I, I, Sorry, yeah, your phone. I should just say your phone. Right. So I mean, look into that. Blows my mind. Who knows? Actually, thinking about that, who knows what we could do? I mean, I it's could get a little side business doing ultrasounds in different countries with my cell phone. With, with her ultrasound, I'd just be like, give me a needle, a flashlight, <laughs> and some duct tape, and yeah. we could stop some internal bleeding, gain access into the vessel, and let it rip. <laughs> Right <laughs> now, when you do your travels, you started a podcast that's had several re several iterations now, right? <laughs> well, the name has changed a couple of times because it was gapped travel after a, an adult. We were taking an adult gap year, and that's kind of where that came from. And then, uh, long story short, the gap incorporated. The, they came after us. Which is oh, so really? They made they sent us a cease and desist, so we had to change the name. I'm like, come on, Gap! Like, well, we were um, travel life freedom and scrubs, and so that's we, true. We were, you know, again, it, the focus is yes, we are healthcare travelers. Healthcare traveling has facilitated this lifestyle for us, but we did think that scrubs kind of shrunk us down into. We like talking about traveling the world, and we will mm. always, in our core, be healthcare travelers. Um, but it's more like the fact of look what the lifestyle has provided us, but we do do a lot of tips on like traveling the world and, and things like that. And so we did want to kind of branch out a little bit. So that whole gap year, uh, gap travel, but now we are in route, uh, travel, um, to, to <laughs> satisfy the gap lawyers. Yes. Um, <laughs> Will you continue that on your, uh, traveling tour so that anybody who wants to follow you can follow you and live vicariously through you? <laughs> yes, a hundred. That was one of the main reasons we wanted to start is because we thought, oh, we're gearing up for this year. Travel will be fun to take people along with us and share our stories and tips and lessons we're learning. And um, and obviously we've been put on hold, but the idea is we're going to start traveling hopefully in July. Fingers crossed. We'll see how the world is at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, taking the podcast along with us and we have a YouTube channel where we do actual like video vlogging style and taking that with us on the road while we're traveling so we can still share the mm -hmm. adventures with people and show people what's possible and if they want to do it too. So yeah. And the visual, the visual of YouTube, but we felt like the podcast allows us to dive so much deeper into logistics and things that might have come up along the travels that we don't really want to sit face to camera on a YouTube video of like us traveling the world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just again, and we always intermingle into, uh, again, the traveler lifestyle allowed this all to happen. So, you know, that's, 100%. that's always the core of what we talk about. Yeah. So when you're planning your travels for this coming year, do you have anything specific that you plan on taking with you or that you're excited about? 
Ooh, Ooh, good question. I mean, selfless plug here. Um, <laughs> we we are recently have invented, I say, because it's not on the market yet, uh, a new feature to a backpack. Uh, I'm I, we are backpack people, and so we had this idea to create um, a backpack straps that basically have everything sewn in safely on the straps of your backpack. Um, and it all came about when I would always get secure and snug and put my wallet safely in my backpack. Kim would always be like, I want a coffee. And then I have to like take my backpack off and then dig in right. through the pockets right. and find it and, and pay for it. Um, and then she- Well, and so the sh on the straps, there's one pocket that has, it can hold your cell phone, okay? So instead of going in and out of your backpack, or it's your right pocket. here. And then on the other strap is um, a little slot that you can put three debit cards and then also your passport. So everything you need mm -hmm. is right here instead of constantly going in and out of your bag. And you know, like even being on a hike, you can just take out your phone, snap a picture, do an Instagram story, put it back in. So it's just, it's efficient and it's easy. And it's what we always wanted because we always travel with a backpack, whether we're in a new city or even just like on an airplane or whatever, we always have our bag and it was always just yeah. the struggle getting everything in and out. Yeah. So, and I lost a lot of boarding passes in the bathroom, um, pulling stuff out of my pockets. Right. And so I always just wanted something right there that I can put in security and then throw it on the, uh, yeah. what do you call it? The uh, x-ray thing and it yeah. goes in yeah. my pocket safely and it's RFID protected. And so yeah, you know, we-, I'm we I'm thinking of being in a crowded train station, a crowded whatever station, and people can kind of get access to your backpack. But when it's in front of you, that's a really cool location and far more secure than having it kind of stuffed back there. Yeah, that Correct. was the other thing because it's it's a day pack. So it's not something that you put all of your stuff in. No. We travel with suitcases, but you can put, you know, a sweatshirt, your computer, headphones, whatever, snacks, snacks of course. Um, so it's a lightweight day pack, but when you're walking around a new city in a new country or anywhere for that matter, you know, you run the risk of somebody pit pocking, you know, your yeah. wallet or whatever. Yeah. And so now it's just all right here. And so you don't have to worry about well, it. Well, plus so, it's nice. You can put a couple cards yeah. and leave your wallet right. in the safe. Um, and just so take is this something that attaches to any backpack one might own or it's its own hardwired into a backpack? It's, it's hardwired into the backpack. Um, okay. We are we are thinking about our, our goal down the road, obviously. We're coming out with this one. It hasn't even been released yet. So thinking of far in advance, we are going to come out with a line, the in-route strap line. But it'll be like a um, – where we've sleeked it. I don't know if that's a word. Sleeked it down. Um, we made it low profile. Uh, still in the works with our prototyper to do one pocket for like a camelback. Um, and so that would be for your phone and two cards. So that way, if you're just out for a hike, you can pop into town um, and still have your phone and, and a couple cards with you that we don't have to lug a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I hate things in my pocket. So that's where it all kind of came about. That's a yeah. really cool invention. Well yeah. done, guys. Thank you. We're excited. So we're going to sell it on Amazon and we're hoping to have the Amazon store opened uh, in, in May sometime. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Perfect. But Check out the show notes. We'll have your podcast link there. We'll have your website link, your traveler school. You're going to continue offering the traveler school for the coming years? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. we love that. There's nothing better than seeing the students come in and getting to meet them um, virtually. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's like my favorite part. Every time somebody comes in, Kim and I, literally three years later, we always say, welcome, Michelle, like, you know, or we always cheers or high five. And like, we're so excited that, us, you know, we just think back to that feeling that if we would have had a course or something, you know, somebody that was teaching us that we connected with, um, how cool that would have been. So we always put ourselves in their shoes and just get super excited three years later, every yeah. student that comes in. So. Yeah. You guys are super experienced. Can you leave us with one tip that you find is super helpful for a traveler? Mm. I think, you know, really just, especially if you're just getting started, you know, really have fun, put yourself out there, step out of your comfort zone, go to TravCon, meet the community, meet the people, be in the Facebook groups. And like, really when, even when you're on assignment, just saying yes to things socially and meeting people and really experiencing where you are. Um, we get to to do so many incredible things as travelers because we're always in different places mm -hmm. with different people and so 
making a conscious effort to put yourself out there, be with the people, the community, and um, and just say yes to this crazy lifestyle. I think the only thing I would add on to that is as travelers, we make decisions I've made more decisions these nine years, I think, than I made in my entire life. Um, just quick decisions and and where we're going next and what are we doing in the contracts and, and learning all of those things. But what I feel like happens, we always are thinking about what's next and really focusing on being present with where you are and really enjoying. Mm. We're in Palm Springs in the, in the spring. And like, you know, we'll try to actually say it like, God, we're in Palm Springs. Like yeah. we never thought we would just yeah. live in Palm Springs. We would have never done that. But because we're traveling, really trying to be present with Palm Springs is where we are from, you know, March to June. And we're going to do everything we can and be present. And then we'll worry about what's next after that. Um, because you can get so... What's worried next? about what's, what's next yeah. am i extending am i not am i leaving and finding a new place and it, you just kind of miss out on a lot of opportunity if you don't you're right on the money with that it really can dominate your thinking and if you can just live in the present mm -hmm. that is just crucial yeah i just want to say uh aaron you should be thankful for kim's outlook just say yes and she said yes to you so yes i correct. did best decision i ever well second best traveling and Aaron. yeah and there had to be a no to her boyfriend before she said yes to me so that True. was good <laughs> awesome well i wish you guys all the luck the best of luck and in, in the future of your travels whether it be july or whatever month it is uh we hope to live vicariously through you on your podcast and in everything that you do so share away Thank you for having us. This was so fun and definitely um, grateful for TravCon and the community because finding that for us was a game changer. Oh, Just everything. connecting with other travelers and being like, wow, there's other people like us. This is so cool. So yeah, it became a quick family and that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's it is. Travel it really is the family for, for so many people that just feel alone. Like yeah. when you go to an assignment, there's maybe one or two other travelers there. And even then you don't get to see them. So it really yeah. is trying. It's nice to have that family where, you know, you can see them every year. So mm -hmm. yeah. fantastic. Yay. And now you can listen to us every week on the travel nursing and allied life podcast. Thank you so much, Kim and Aaron. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks for listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life. You can find the full show notes below or at travcon.org. Please help us out by rating our podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.